So this morning, I'm starting a new series. So if, you're, if it's your first time at Family Life, if you're new around Family Life, this is a great time for you to be coming around, for you to be getting involved, and you can follow us through uh, this series. But this series is called Blink, Blinking. We're going to be talking about the importance of our daily lives. Um, you know, every day carries tremendous value, and we need to make sure that we're living life to the fullest. And, you know, the reason we call it blink is because there's nothing faster than a blink. A blink takes one-tenth of a second or 100 milliseconds, and, uh, you know, the tick on a clock, one tick on a clock, you can blink three times. You can go try that this, you know, get a clock, go, go, go old school, and try it this weekend. Maybe if you're really fast, you can get four in. But three blinks in one tick of a clock. And so a, a blink is really, it's lightning fast in our lives are like a blink of an eye. Our lives are going fast, and, and, you know, our time on earth is short, and so we just have to make sure that when we die, we've made the most of the time um, that God has given us. I believe time is our most precious, most important commodity. Some of you think it's money. You can always make more money. You can always make more money. You can always work harder, get another job, but you can never, you can never extend the time that God is giving you here on earth. It doesn't matter if you eat kale every day and you're organic and clean. It doesn't matter. You have, you have an expiration date. You and I have. I just wanted to start this message, this series off with a word of encouragement. You have an expiration date, you know. Um, but but look, think about this with me. You know, as, I, as, I, as I'm growing older, you know, I'm watching my kids grow up and you know, my kids were in elementary school, then they're in middle school, you know, then they're in high school, then they're in college, then they're out of college, and, and now they're starting new relationships and, you know, um, I guess moving toward marriage and starting their own, their own families. And I'm just amazed at how time flies by. And so all of you kids that are here today, all the, all the young kids, all the high school kids, college kids, and you think this old man up here is crazy, I'm telling you, you're going to blink and you're going to look like me. Oh, you can pray for that anyway. <laughs> so, but anyway, it just, it just goes, by, it goes by fast. You know, I sit in the hallway and I greet people as they're coming and going. And, you know, especially, you know, we were shut, shut down for two months for COVID. Then many people, it took six months, a year. Some people are just now coming back. We're over two years. And, and I see their kids come in. I'm like, my goodness, you know, they grew eight inches. And I'm thinking, how'd they grow in eight inches overnight? Well, it wasn't overnight. It was six months. It was eight months. It, 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 it was a year, you know, just things were going fast. And last year, Trace and I, we went to, we went to Florida for a vacation. Uh, I met Tracy in Florida. We lived in Pensacola for a number of years. And um, we, we drove by. Every time we go there, we drive by old places that were important to us when we were there. And so we drove by our high school. We went to, went to high school together. And, uh, you know, drove by, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's wrong? It's, like, dilapidated, you know? And, uh, you know, th it doesn't, it's not even a school anymore, and it's falling apart. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what happened? Like, I'm like, it happened, happened overnight. How did it get? It's been 30 years, you know? Actually, it's been more than that, but that's all I can attribute right now. It's been 30 years. <laughs> but I look out there in the parking lot, and I look where you had a recess, and I look, you know, uh, you know, Trace and I met, we we're 12 years old, and then later in high school we started dating, and I see us out there talking with our friends and doing activities and just hanging out in, in, in the parking lot. But, you know, it, it, it seems like just yesterday, but it's been a long time because time is, is, going, is going by quickly. Um, you know, I remember, now I'm going to do something today that I'm not allowed to do. I'm going to talk about my family a little bit today, and like they try to make me pay them when I when they were young. They try to make me pay them if I put them on the big screen, and so I'm not doing that. But I can sneak one in every once in a while. Then I apologize, but it's going to be a couple years, okay? So I just want you to know that before this. But I remember when all all of our all of our kids were born. I remember that, and and um, probably Ty was the most memor memorable birth because he was. I don't know how we were living in Louisiana, and people told us we should have a, a childbirth at home, and we did that. And um, so that's, that's memorable to me. But, you know, in six weeks, in six weeks, eight weeks, it was, you know. Tracy's in labor, and I'm calling the midwife, and she's like, I'm going as fast as I can. I was like, how fast are you going? I'm doing 80. I'm like, that's not fast at all. Get here fast, right? But in eight weeks, just in a couple months, I'm going to be marrying Ty and Chandler. You know, I remember his birth, 
and now he's going get, to be getting married, and we're happy for him, and they're going to, you, know, uh, you know, start their own family. I remember the day that Trace and I were married. I, I still remember that. I remember that whole, whole deal, and... Um, Well, what, what did I say wrong? The whole, the whole deal? I remember that wondrous occasion. Hey, look, sometimes I got ADD, and sometimes I moved on to the next line before I finished the other one. And so, anyway, she knows what I mean. I remember that. I, remember, I, remember, I just remember when we were married and remember how special it was and how beautiful it was. And, and um, you know, we were going way back then. We were going to Cancun for our honeymoon, so we drove from Sam Marcus and you know, all the festivities wind down and we're driving and this is crazy but uh, we were driving I-10 into Katy and I guess I got my first speeding ticket doing 67 into 55 I'm telling you those Katy cops they need to catch some criminals man they're over there just racking in the money right and I got stuff you know happy you know all the stuff our car is decorated and I could like I, could, I couldn't believe he gave me a ticket like what's wrong with this guy you know you're going through a divorce or what you know what is, I couldn't believe it. And then we, you know, we, we spent the night here and then we're flying into, you know, it's funny just to remember, flying, flying into Cancun, you know, in Aero, Mexico. And we, we didn't know, we didn't, I mean, we're getting married. We, you know, we got things to do. We're, we're not like uh, watching the news. And we flew into Cancun on a tropical depression. There's a tropical depression. And I'll never forget this. So we, we got on Aero, Mexico and we had some language difficulties there. And I ordered, I ordered a tomato juice, a V8 juice, you know. And they brought, I told Trace, that looks, that looks like funny, you know, funny stuff there. And they brought me a Bloody Mary, you know. <laughs> Who said, well, go, well, go repent, you sinner. People are making it easy. They're making it easy today. And so anyway, I, like, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't drink that, you know. So it just sat there on my, it sat there the whole way, you know, and I ordered something else, a Coke or whatever. And I'm telling you, we're going in, we're getting close, and the plane's dropping. And I'm telling you, I reached up there, and I shot that Bloody Mary. <laughs> Boom! And if there had been five more, I'd have shot them too. I'm telling you, I was, I was scared to death. And a small plane, I know what you're saying. You know, that's not very spiritual. I agree. I agree. You should have prayed. I agree. But I was 20 years old. I was 20 years old, you know? And then you, then you land, and, and then way back there, they, you, they didn't go all the way up to the airport, you know. They come out with umbrellas. Well, it's blowing like 60 miles an hour, and they're, you know, their umbrellas are full. It's just, it's just a crazy experience, you know. But I, I remember that like it was yesterday, but it wasn't. It was getting close to 33 years ago. And, and life, life goes by just so fast. You know, once you get married and you start working and making money and, you know, there's houses to buy, there's cars to buy, there's cars to get fixed, there's yards to mow, there's bills to pay. Then you start having children and, and then you got to take care of them and, you know, you're shuttling them around. And my point is this, you can be so busy, but you're not taking advantage of your life. And I'm telling you, if you sit around whining and complaining and spending your time doing things that are not important, you're going to blink and you're going to be at the end of your life and you're going to have regret. Amen. And so we, we have to really just, uh, you know, make sure that we're making the most of our lives, that we're focusing on the important things. A, a friend of mine, his dad used to always tell us this, life is short, make sure you enjoy it. He still said every time, you know, we would go to someone's house, we'd be leaving to go do something. Life is short. Make sure that you enjoy it. And my question today is, life is short. It's like a blink of an eye. Are you enjoying life? Are you making the most of your life? Are you starting new adventures in your life? Or are you like a hamster on a treadmill or, or on a wheel, not a treadmill, but that wheel that goes round and round, and, you're, you know, you just, you're just not going to get off. So let's go to the Scripture and see what the Scripture the Bible says a lot about the days of our life. In Psalms 90, 12, it, it tells us this. It says, teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. You know, that, that, that word there, number, teach us to number, or teach us to count our days. You know, really, this is a prayer. This is a prayer, and the prayer goes like this. Lord, give me wisdom, give me insight, give me understanding about my time on this earth. Help me to realize uh, that my time is short and help me to make the most of it. And I think all of us, if we're not, if, if we're just going to be totally honest and transparent, 
uh, I feel like I have. I've I'm gotten myself in a little bit of trouble so far. If we're going to be honest, a lot of times we waste precious moments. We waste precious time. We're worried about things that don't even matter. And we're on the wheel of, in this world. And it's all about temporary things. And, 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 you know, we're not doing anything to build eternity. And, and so this, during this series, we're going to look at it from a lot of different ways. I'm just introducing it today. But just want you to think about this. And basically what I'm saying is this. Every one of us has a finite number of days on this earth. Not infinite, but finite. And since we have a finite or a limited number of days, it, it, it makes each day increasingly valuable. You know, so you, you don't want to waste a single day because once it's gone, you just simply can't get it back. When Trace and I, we were in college, we got married, we were in college, and, and we went to um, a church in New Braunfels, Texas called Tree of Life. And my pastor, pastor and his wife, it was Dennis and Jan Gallagher, and really great people. And they were in their, you know, maybe, maybe they were in their low 40s, mid 40s, and, and um, went to the doctor one week. She wasn't feeling well, and it found out that she had a, a rare form of cancer. And it, wa it wasn't um, immediately terminal, but it was going to take her life. It was going to shorten her life. And I'll never forget, I'll never forget when I talked with him, he was just kind of, uh, you know, they were just kind of shell-shocked by this. And he said, you know, there were so many things that we planned to do when we got older, and now we don't know if older is going to come. And, you know, I'm... I, you know, I was 22, 23 years old, and that, that just sunk into me. So, yes, we need to do some important things. You know, we need to, you know, save to make sure we have retirement one day and all that. But we can't just live our whole lives waiting for when we're 60, 65, 70. We don't know if we're going to get there. And, and so it just really, that was really a, a wake-up call for me. Psalm 90, 12, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And, and so we just start... It's just so easy for us to start going through life and, and living life. And we're worried about things that really don't matter. And we're stressing out and we're arguing with people over dumb things. And we just don't realize that we're wasting our life. We're wasting our life on things that don't, that don't really, really matter. Um, I had a, had a lady. A lady came to me, a lady and a man. They came to me a couple years back. And they were, they were telling me, um, you know, uh, it was October. She said, you know, my family has a big, that we have a big Thanksgiving celebration every year, but I just don't think we're going to go this year. You know, there, her and her sibling had a sibling rivalry, and they weren't getting along, and, and so she's like, you know, I just, you know, having trouble with a brother or whatever. I just don't know. I just don't know if I'm going to go to family Thanksgiving, and they were, they told me that, but I'm like, well, are you here for me to give you some advice, or you just want, want to tell me that? And they said, no, we won't. We told you that, but what do you think? And I said, well, here's what I think. I said, how old are your parents? I said, you have only a certain number of Thanksgiving left with your parents. I think you ought to grow up and be mature, and you ought to go to that family event. You don't have to spend the whole time talking to the sibling. Just go in, be cordial, and, and just enjoy the day with your parents. You know, that's the important thing. Your parents are not going to be here, you know, forever. So, you know, make the most of it. And, and they end up going, and um, I, I don't know if they had a good time or not, but I'm just going to say they had a good time, you know? And so let's, let's look at this. Now, let's look at this real quick. Now, I'm sure, you know, life expectancies are going up, and I'm sure a lot of you, I know that, you know, you're, you eat all organic, and you're eating your kale, and you're exercising miles every day. So I'm sure you're going to live to be 100-something years old. Okay, but for the sake of this purpose, um, these, these cups have, have uh, these little rocks in them, and the rocks represent a year in your life, a year, a year in your life. So let's just, let's just say for purpose, purpose sake, demonstration, that you have 80 years, okay? So this is, what, this is what 80 years looks like, okay? So you're starting, your, you know, your cup, is, it, you know, it's pretty, pretty much full. And, uh, you know, then you're working through life, and you get to 30 pretty quick, and so... When, when you're 30, now look at that. You're already missing some stuff, right? And now some of you are scared because you're way above 30, so I'm getting to you right now. <laughs> so, you know, then when you get to be 50, you know, you're just, I mean, look, 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 look at that. You're just, it, things, are, things are whittling down. 
And if you get to be 60 and you're living to 80, you know, now, now some of you, if you're, you know, if you're 78, don't say, oh my gosh, I got two, two rocks. In my no, I'm not saying that. You, you may live forever. It's just a demonstration. It's just a demonstration, okay? But my, po my point is, look, you know, we start up here and we all think, oh, we just got so much time. And, but as we go through, it's just, it, it, it's winnowing down. It's getting smaller and smaller. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Now, let me give you a summary of some of the other things that scriptures say, says about our time on earth. You can't do a message on your time on earth or, or your, your years on earth without reading James 4.4. 4. James 4.14 says this, why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. Isn't that true? Tracy and I have been trying to, you know, we had this big plan that we were going to go, you know, I'm, I'm Irish, and so we were going to go to the motherland for our anniversary a few years ago, had, it, had all this planned out, and then COVID hit, and no one's going anywhere, right? And then we, some time went by, and I don't know, six, eight months ago, you know, we were planning again because that's over, and then I had my back problems, and Tracy's like, look, I, I'm like, why aren't we going to Ireland? And she's like, I'm not going over there with you limping around everywhere and complaining that you're back. Well, oh, okay. Okay, you just have to say, oh, we don't want to, we're not going to go. We don't have to go with that. But we don't know what will happen tomorrow. No one saw COVID coming. You know, some of you, th this year, you're going you're gonna to lose jobs that you never thought you would lose. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And, and then he says this, what is your life? And it compares, he says, you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. That word vanish means to snatch out of sight. You're a mist that's just snatched out of sight. You know, when I was in the military, I was stationed in, in Fort Ord in Monterey, California, and it was just the most amazing thing. It was a lot of amazing things about Monterey, um, the cost of living and all that, but the weather, oh my goodness, you know, you don't need an air conditioner there. It's like 58 to 62 degrees every night, highs of 75, just beautiful. But off of Monterey Bay, you know, several times a week, this fog, this mist would just roll in. And I mean, you know, we'd be in t-shirts, we have to get coats on, the temperature drops like 10 to 15 degrees. And then like 10 or 15 minutes later, it's gone. It just rolls in and, and there it is, you can't deny it. And then it, then it just, it just roll, it rolls out. And the Bible says that's what our life's like. We're like a mist that appears for a little bit and that mist just kind of burns out. Psalms 39 verse five, it says this, you have made my days a mere hand breadth. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Everyone is but a breath, even those who seem secure. So you, you have made my days a mere hand breath. A hand breath, that's a, a biblical measurement, basically three or four inches, and your four fingers across, that, that's a hand breath. And that's how they used to measure things. If you went to a lumber yard, you went to cut lumber or whatever, and in the biblical days, that you measure it before rulers and all that, measure tapes, a hand breath. And then it says that the span, the, the span of your days, the span would be, would be when your hands were like that. So that's a hand breath, and, and that was a span. And, and it says then your breath, your, everyone is but a breath. Have you ever, I know we don't get a lot of these, but when it's real cold and you go outside and you breathe and you can see your breath. And, but if something funny happens, it doesn't linger, right? It just, it just disappears. And, and that's kind of the, the biblical interpretation of how fast our lives go. One more scripture. Job 9, 25, 26 says, my days are swifter than a runner. They fly away without a glimpse of joy. They skim past like boats of Paprius, like eagles swooping down on their prey. So, you know, my days are sweeter than a runner. Have you ever been to a track or you watch the Olympics and they're running around the track, you know, how, how fast it goes? And it says, man, your life is like someone going around a track. It, it, it goes fast. They're moving, they're, moving, they're moving swiftly. And, you know, boats of Paprius, way back in these days, they made, they, of course, they made, you know, paper with papyrus, but they made boats with papyrus, and they were lightweight boats. They were like the speed boats of the day way back then. And then it's like an eagle swooping down for its prey. And, you know, so, some, of the, some of the birds back in these days, they say they, these uh, vultures and things, they, when, they, when they go down to swoop down to get their prey, they're actually moving at close to 125 miles an hour. 
I mean, the point is it's, it's fast. Things are moving fast, and our lives are moving fast. So if life is moving so quickly, if we have a finite number of days on earth, uh, that makes every decision that we make every day important. Every day, if you don't make, if, if you make a non-decision or a bad decision, or if you're just wasting your life, that's one day you can never get back. And so, again, my goal is to make you think. I, I hope that you, during this series you go home and you just reevaluate your lives. There's probably a lot of stuff you need to get rid of. Probably a lot of things you're wasting your time on. This is not important, you know? And, and, and maybe you can save yourself uh, some regret later on. So if life is short, here's the question. How should we spend our lives? That's how we're opening up this series. So we, we you know... I think I've done a pretty thorough job of telling you that you're not going to be here very long, right? I mean, I just spent, you know, 10, 12 minutes, you know, just really hammering your miss, you know, your, you know, all this kind of stuff. So if life is short, how should we spend our lives? And here's the positive part. Here's the positive part. We want to make the, the most of our days. Number one, we need to take in and savor the moments. We need to take in and savor the moments. John Maxwell said, life is now in session. Are you present? Your life is happening. Whether you are organizing it or, or, or evaluating it, life is happening. And, and so again, are you going through life and you're so busy that you're not focused on the important things? You know, you don't pay attention to your kids. You don't, <coughs> excuse me, you don't notice your wife. You've lost touch with friends and used to be good friends, just hadn't touched with them. You know, so that, this is very important. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show some... Um, Pictures here in just a minute, but let, let, let me get there. Hold on just a minute. And then, um, you know, I think one, I was thinking this week, I think one thing that, you know, of course, Trace and I, you're never going to be a perfect parent. You know, you're, you're never going to be perfect. But one thing I think Trace and I did was we really invested, we were all in on our kids. We were all in, we were all in on the kingdom, and we were all in, all in on our family. And I mean, we went every, every, every dance recital, every sporting event, every every school, you know, award ceremony, we went to every single, we, we never missed. Yeah, I, I know some parents, you know, when I was coaching sports and things in the league, some parents, you know, they never, they never come to their kids' stuff. I could never, I could not figure that out. I, I could, I could, I just, just was beside it. Tracy, we, we were just all in. And, um, but the, the thing was, now that our kids are grown and they're doing their own lives, I mean, sometimes they tell me, I'm like, hey, y'all want to come over? like, Dad, we have a life, you know? So we have a life. Well, I know, but I just want to be in there a little bit, you know? Uh, I don't want to have to kidnap you. I can do that, but I don't want to, you know? Um, but as they're growing up, and here, here's the point. You don't have to spend a lot of money to make memories with your family. And, and so now that they're older, we have to work harder, harder, just to try to spend time with them. And so we, we've done all kind of things. I mean, we've gone vacations, skiing trips, and all that. But you know, one of my favorite ways to spend time with, 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 with the kids is out on the water on my boat. I just like the boat because there's nothing out there, right? You can't get reception half the time. I mean, it's like you get to talk. You know, it's like a couple, they're going on a date, and they go to a movie. I'm like, well, that was really communicative. You know, you could really get a lot of talking down there. But we, we want to talk, and so let me show you. First of all, let me show you a picture of my family. Some of you don't even know who my family is. Um, and so that, that's, that's a, a, a recent picture of my family. So Tracy and I and Terry in the middle, he's the oldest. He's on staff here. He's a student pastor. Ty is on the right, so he just finished his occupational therapy degree, his master's degree. He's working. We're marrying him. I'm marrying him next month or in September. And then that's Trinity you know, there at the bottom, uh, the baby. So and let's go to the next picture. So, you know, and that's Terry. Terry and I were fishing one. That's a beautiful speckled trout. I'm telling you, you see Jesus when you catch one like that. <laughs> so, so I don't like to fish. I'm like, no, you just haven't caught fish. That's the problem. You haven't caught fish, right? And so then he, he, I took him and, and his best friend, Aussie. We went uh, fishing. I think there's the next picture. And so, that, yeah, that's, that, that's like a really good catch right there. But we just went and spent time together, went out to the coast, spent together, time together a little bit. And so then I think the next picture is of Ty and Chandler. So that's my son Ty and his fiance Chandler. They're, again, they're getting married in September. And um, so Chandler comes to me one day, and she's like, Mr. Darnell, she said, um, I've been asking Ty, and he won't ask you, 
And I'm like, well, what do you want? And she's like, I've never been fishing. I would like for you to take me fishing on your boat. She just twisted my arm. Okay, we got to drop everything, cancel the schedule next week. I told Tracy, we're going down the coast. We're going fishing, right? And so, look at that. So she had never caught a fish, and, it, and the fishing wasn't good. I'm like, Lord Jesus, please help. That, her first fish was a 20-inch speckled trout. Th- that's not bad, right? That, that, that's pretty good. Okay, now we get to the baby. Now we get to the baby. So Trinity, okay. This is Trinity and her boyfriend, Graham. And um, so anyway, uh, took them fishing too. I had to decide whether he was going to make it back to the dock or not. <laughs> so he's still with us. He's still with us. No, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Um, and so anyway, here we, we went on a fishing trip and and anyway, so just spent the day together, went down there for a couple of days, just had a good time building relationships. And then I got, I got Tracy on, she doesn't go on the boat with me that much. She doesn't, you know, she gets um, motion sickness. So, uh, but she went with me one day. So let's look at this. So we had an interesting thing. So for Tracy, first of all, I told her to throw by the bridge and she caught the bridge. So she caught the bridge. And then the next thing, so she caught some moss. But everyone does that, okay? But then, look, then she caught a puffer fish, right? And now, that fish has no nutritional value, okay? But she told me that I couldn't catch one. And she was right, right? So she, she won that. She won the, won the, won the puffer fish and, and all that. But anyway, so uh, my, whole, my whole point is life is short. We have to make sure that we're savoring the moments. No one on their deathbed wishes they'd have done one more project. No one on their deathbed wishes they had worked an extra weekend. It's all of, when you get to the end, it's all about the relationships with the people close to me that I love. And it's, and it's about what did I do and how did I live for the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, that, 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 that is it. And so I just, I just I want to encourage you, and I want to encourage you. Some of you have broken relationships with family members. Fix it. Fix it. You're going to have so much regret if somebody, if they die before you fix it. And be the big person, you know, just, well, I'm not wrong. It doesn't matter who's wrong. I mean, just humble yourself because life is too short to have broken relationships. And so, again, sometimes we're just going through life, checking the boxes, but we don't do the things that are important. So, number one, taste, savor life, enjoy life. Number two, Say important things to important people. Make sure that the important people in your life know how much you love them. Know how much you care. You know, sometimes we're, we're very good at sharing our thoughts, but not our feelings. I mean, a lot of times you don't even want to know what somebody's thoughts are, but they'll tell you. But we're good at telling thoughts, but not sharing our feelings. And and a lot of people are scared to have intimate moments with people that they love. They're, they're scared to do it. And, but it just has to, have to happen. One of my best friends, he's, he's Bill Tisdale, and we've been friends for a long time. And I'll never forget this. Years ago, years ago, he called me. And we're, you know, we haven't lived in the same place for quite a while. And then in our conversation, he says, hey, Terry, I love you. And I was caught off guard because I don't usually just tell men I love them that aren't in the family, right? And he caught me off guard, but I'm like, man, I can't leave him hanging. So I say, hey, man, I love you too. And so Ty was right there, and Ty's like, who are you talking to? I'm like, oh, that was Bill. He's like, interesting. <laughs> interesting, right? <laughs> but, you know, Trace and I, we always made sure that we told our kids we loved them every day. And I even had a conversation with my kids. Look, you can never do anything that will cause me not to love you, Amen. ever. I don't care what you do. If I have to come, you know, visit you in prison, now I don't want you to go to prison, but if you do, you know, I, I am going to, to be able to do this. So make sure, make sure we say things that, 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 that are very important. Trinity is doing travel nursing, so she's gone a lot. And uh, the other day, a while back, last month, a couple months ago, she called me and we're talking and and on the phone, and I was busy. I was at work doing things, but it was when she could talk, and, and she told me she loved me, and apparently I didn't tell her I love her back. And so we hang up the phone, and I got an immediate text. You didn't say it. You didn't say you love me. 
Well, I got to call her back and tell her I love her. But it had been that same. We're just so busy at work doing things. We got to slow down, slow the clock down. And we got to make sure that we say the important things to the important people. Um, let, let's look what in Matthew, what the Bible says, Matthew 3, 17. It says, and a voice from heaven said, this is my son, the father talking to Jesus, whom I love with him. I am well pleased. Even the father told the son how much he loved him and, and in front of other people. And Philippians 1, 7, and 8, of course, the apostle Paul had a special relationship with the church in Philippi, okay? And he says, it is, it is right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart and whether I am in chains or defending and f confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. So we got to say important things to important people. And the last thing is this. We have to make sure that we prepare for eternity. You know, if life is short, if we have a limited number of time, then we have to make sure that we've made things right with the Lord. We, have to build a, we need to build a relationship with him. We need to serve him. We need to praise him. We need to give him the best part of our life. I, I just find it amazing, amazing. I know, I know so many people that are successful, and they've planned and organized every part of their life. And they have more money than they can ever spend, but they have never made things right with God. And, and the Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, it, it is appointed for a man to die once, and after that, face judgment. So, you know, basically, this is the way the world works is we're all going to die, and either Jesus is gonna, will have been our Savior, or he's going to be our judge if we didn't accept him. And, and that's not being critical. He's done everything on his part to make a relationship, uh, you know, possible. You know, Tracy and I, several times we've, we've been able to go to Israel, and hopefully we're going to be able to go this next year as well. Um, but it's just an incredible thing. I, it, I encourage everyone to take a trip to Israel um, because it's all about Jesus. Everywhere you go, Jesus was there. He was teaching in synagogues, and, you know, it's just walking in the footsteps of Jesus. And so our first year time we went there, the boat captain, we went out on a, a ride on the Sea of Galilee, and he got out to the middle of the Sea of Galilee, and he just turned the motor off, and he's like, I want everyone to take a few minutes to reflect. And I'm telling you, it was one of those most moving moments in my life. Because everywhere you looked, it was about Jesus. That's where he gave the message on the Beatitudes. You know, this is where he walked on water. This is where he multiplied the fish and the loaves. You know, this is where he healed the demoniac and the pigs rushed down the bank. It's everywhere was about Jesus. And I was just overwhelmed with emotion. I'm like, Lord, thank you for everything you've done for me. You know, we don't only need to be appreciative to the people in our lives. We need to be appreciative of our creator. And we need to thank God for the blessings he's put in our life. It will change your outlook on life if you will begin to do that. But it would just really, really just overwhelm me. I was thinking about the story of, of the flood and Noah's ark this week. You know, Noah built the ark for 100 years. And then it says the door was open for Noah and his family to go in, and all the animals came in, and the door stayed open for seven days. For seven days, anyone that wanted to was welcome to go into the ark, but when the door closed, the decision was done. No one else could get in the ark. And, and I'm just, I'm wondering, you know, basically what I'm saying is, there's probably people that come to church every week, and and, and, and maybe they, they know about God and they know about Jesus, but they have never surrendered their life to him. And I'm telling you, there is a window of time. There is a window of time, and you don't want to be like those people outside of the ark when it started to rain. And so, and so just uh, please consider that. I'm going to close with one story. The other day I was having a conversation with somebody, and... Um, it was kind of a personal conversation. There was a group of people around, but we were off to the side. We're having a conversation. And then I, I looked over there, and there was a person standing there, and they didn't have anyone to talk to or whatever. And I'm like, hey, why don't you come over here? Hey, come over here. And the person said, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. And basically, I thought about that this week. He, he thought, hey, they're in a personal conversation. I don't want to go and intrude on their conversation. 
but it was over. I'm like, hey, come on over. And you know, I think that's what it's like when a lot of people don't have a relationship with God. You know, maybe they start coming to church and they're sitting in the back and they're coming in late and leaving early because it's just uncomfortable. You know, you don't know anybody. You don't know the language. And, you know, you're, you, you think you, you, you feel, you're feeling something, but you don't know how to, how to translate that. And it, can, I, can I tell you something? All God cares about is you. God loves you exactly how you are. You don't have to change one thing. Now, when you come to him, he's going to change you. But it's going it's to be easy. And so I, I just find it easy. Some people, they're just, I have one friend of mine, and he used to always tell me, I was always trying to talk to him about the Lord, and he always say, well, you know, you know the Lord. You have a relationship with the Lord. You know, I don't. And he always felt like he was on the outside, like he had to get better before he came to Jesus. No, you just come to Jesus. Amen. You just come to Jesus. Would you stand with me today? Father God, we come before you. Lord, uh, you know, th this series is really about just making sure we're doing the important things. Life is, goes by in a blink. You know, life, life is short. And we need to make sure that we're savoring life, we're enjoying it. We need to make sure that we tell the people who are important to us that we love them, that we appreciate them, even you, Father. And, and Lord, we need to make sure that we don't leave this earth without making sure our relationship with you is accomplished, that we have a relationship with you, Lord, that you're our Savior. So Father God, we come before you this, this morning. And I, you know, I just want to ask if, if there's anyone here this morning that has never given their life to Jesus, you... you You've, you're not prepared to leave this earth. And you would like to just to, to, to make that change, make that commitment this morning. Is there anyone like that this morning? Then let me ask, maybe there's many of you here today and, uh, you know, you're thinking, wow, maybe I need to make some evaluations. Maybe I need to change some things. Maybe I need to change the priorities in my life because life is going by so fast and I don't want to have regret at the end and would you just raise your hand if the Lord has shown you something that maybe you just need to take care of this week Lord we just come before you God and Lord we know life is moving fast we have a limited number of days and we want to make sure we want to make sure that, that our lives are uh, that we're making the most of our lives Lord God so I pray right now the Lord as we do this series you're just helping to show us some things Lord God and I pray for everyone here, Lord, you would just allow them. Give them the ability to make the changes, Lord, uh, in, in, so that their life is not wasted. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, listen, the worship team is, I'm going to close this with a prayer here. The worship team is going to, they're going to lead us another song, and you're, you're free to stay here and worship. If you have kids, you can go get your kids, but uh, I just want to pray for you this morning. Father God, I just pray right now for all your people here, Lord, and we just ask for your blessings, for your protection, for your guidance, for your deliverance upon their lives, Lord. And, and I just pray, Lord, right even today, Lord, that you would just make an impression on their life, God, and help them to live the lives that they want to live. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you, church. Have a great week.